GDM stands for gestational diabetes mellitus. So it's a type of diabetes that occurs only in pregnancy. It is, comes on in the second half of pregnancy and it goes away after delivery. Gestational diabetes, the rates of it are actually increasing in the United States. It's thought to be at least 5% of all pregnancies are complicated by gestational diabetes. And one of the main risk factors for diabetes is obesity. So because obesity rates are increasing in the United States, some populations have gestational diabetes rates as high as 10 to 20 percent of all pregnancies. Non-white individuals have a higher risk of having gestational diabetes. So that would be blacks, Asians, and Hispanics all have higher rates than non-Hispanic whites. In the United States, most health centers screen all women for gestational diabetes. And that's because the risk factors for gestational diabetes are so common in the population. Gestational diabetes can have effects both on the mother and the fetus, as well as the newborn. Some of the effects on the mother are increased risk of preeclampsia, which is a type of high blood pressure that comes on in pregnancy, can be very serious, and can lead to early delivery. The other thing is that women who have gestational diabetes often have bigger babies, so they have an increased risk of cesarean section, which means that they go from the possibility of having a vaginal delivery to often requiring a cesarean section, which requires more days in the hospital and a greater time for recovery from the delivery. So the mothers have a high risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And if you look at studies that have followed women after having gestational diabetes, the risk is as high as 50%, even to 70% of women with gestational diabetes will later in life develop type 2 diabetes. And even by five years after a pregnancy with gestational diabetes, about 30% of women who had gestational diabetes already have type 2 diabetes. And for the baby, what happens is studies are now showing that these babies that are born very large may have issues with obesity in adolescence, and they may have also an increased risk for themselves to develop diabetes and other conditions associated with obesity, such as high blood pressure. In our program, we have a high-risk obstetrician, we have two diabetes specialists, we have a nutritionist, and we have a nurse practitioner who's a certified diabetes educator. So when someone has di is diagnosed with gestational diabetes, in a single visit, they can get a team approach because the first approach that we undertake for women who are diagnosed with gestational diabetes is seeing if the glucose can be controlled by healthy eating and physical activity. So the dietitian and the nurse practitioner are really key in helping the woman have a chance of achieving normal sugars with lifestyle changes. If the lifestyle changes don't work, and they do in about 75% of individuals, but in the 25% or so where it doesn't work, then we recommend that the woman start on insulin therapy to control her sugars for the health of the pregnancy. And in that case, the diabetes specialist would be involved working with the woman to adjust her insulin doses so that her sugars would remain in a good range for pregnancy. We put together a program with Centers for Disease Control Funding where we created a lifestyle intervention with the goal being that women within the year after pregnancy would lose their pregnancy weight. And the reason why we did that is that weight that women gain during pregnancy and they retain at even six months after delivery and 12 months after delivery has been shown to be predictive of future overweight and future obesity. So one arm of the study got routine care after pregnancy, and the other arm got a web-based intervention that women could look at on their personal computers or on a um, smartphone. And we taught women how to eat more healthy, how to increase their physical activity, 
with the goal of losing their pregnancy weight at the end of a year or if they lost their pregnancy weight before the end of the year to help them continue to lose more weight. We found two things. One is that the women in the lifestyle program not only didn't gain weight, they actually lost weight in the one year after delivery and they lost more weight than the women in the control group who actually gained weight. And the other way we looked at it is we looked at whether women were back to their pre-pregnancy weight. And the women who got routine care were above their pre-pregnancy weight because they kept on their pregnancy weight at one year. We were happy to see that the women in the lifestyle arm were back to their pre-pregnancy weight at just one year after delivery. We're actually working on a follow-up study now where we're going to be um, following women not just for one year after pregnancy, but for two years after pregnancy. And we'll be able to say, is the weight loss maintained after two years? And importantly, we're going to be able to see what happens to their glucose levels to answer whether we're really try, um, succeeding at decreasing type 2 diabetes. The other thing, message that I think is really important is that it's not all over once you deliver and your gestational diabetes goes away. What, you, what women who have had gestational diabetes have is a window into their future health. It, the window tells them they're at increased risk for type 2 diabetes, but that window also allows them to make changes to decrease their risk.